So in this chapter, we will look at vector control of permanent magnet synchronous motor drives, sometimes also called PMAC drives. So in this, uh, looking at the cross-sectional view and just a two-pole machine, we see a north and south pole on the rotor and then three-phase winding on the stator. And uh, this, uh, this pole pair is producing a sinusoidal flux density distribution that is reaching the stator windings, and that is represented by this uh, space vector BR, and uh, the d-axis is always aligned uh, with this uh, BR space vector, and q-axis, of course, is at 90 degrees here. So we can see that uh, in the d-axis of the stator winding, we the flux linkage is given by this equation expression, LS, which includes the magnetizing plus leakage, uh, times ISD, and the field flux uh, from the rotor reaching the stator. And uh, in the Q axis, there is no field flux, so it's only this expression over here. All right, so we can write uh, in a very similar manner the D and Q axis uh, uh, voltage equations, and uh, we can then express uh, these two equations in, in this form here in terms of uh, bringing DDT term to the left-hand side. And then we notice that uh, from the previous two equations, we have lambda SD and lambda SQ, and we can substitute for lambda SD and lambda SQ, and uh, uh, then they will give us the, uh, you know, as this lambda terms can disappear from here. All right, so, so here we can see that uh, uh, you know, the, the torque expression is very similar to that before, and we can uh, substitute that for uh, lambda SD ISQ and lambda SQ ISD, and uh, what we see here, the two other, two other terms cancel out, we are, we are only left with this here. <clears throat> and uh, D omega mechanical DT is given by this electromagnetic, uh, electromechanical equation, and uh, where omega m in radians per second is uh, p over 2 times the mechanical speed. Okay. So uh, it is kind of useful to have per, per phase a steady state equivalent circuit uh, where we see that uh, 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 this is what it looks like here, but we should uh, see the, the derivation of it. And that we can see here that in steady state, DDT terms are zero. So VSD and VSQ are given by this expression. And if you multiply the second equation by J on both sides and add them together and then convert them into space vector form, then we have this expression here. There's a slight error here that this bracket should include J over here. So now from this, uh, space vector equation, we know how to go to the phasor equation, which is given like this here. And here we can see that the peak of this uh, uh, phasor, that's the voltage generated uh, in the stator A, A axis winding uh, due to the uh, rotation of the, the permanent magnets, is, uh, its peak is given by this expression, where this quantity uh, constant Ke is given by this, so it's uh, this peak is proportional to omega sub m. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we can uh, go and uh, uh, simulate this uh, in this DQ reference frame, where these two quantities, reference quantities, may be coming from some outer controller. And if you look at the equation for VSD and VSQ, uh, you know only this part pertains to d axis. And this is really the compensation term. You can think of it as a feed forward term. Similarly, in the Q axis, only this part is for Q axis. And you can think of this as a compensation term. And we have our feed forward term. And we have seen that before. So based on this equation and this equation, we you know, derive the, the PI controller coefficient KP and K sub I here. And uh, then we can see here in order to get the reference for d axis and q axis voltages uh, we add the compensation terms which are coming here uh, here and here and uh, 
adding those two here, we get the, uh, the reference uh, voltages for VSD and VSQ, and then this DQ to ABC transformation, knowing theta sub M, uh, then we can generate uh, the reference voltages for phases A, B, and C, and that is then the role of this PWM converter or inverter to give those voltages there, and then they supply the motor and these uh, currents IA, IB, and IC result. And by measuring the, the position, so we, here we really need a position sensor which tells us where the magnets are, and uh, so the, <clears throat> and then multiplying it by P over two, we get theta sub M, which gets fed back into this block here. And uh, also this uh, theta sub M is integrated, uh, is differentiated rather, d theta dt is a speed, we get omega sub M, which is needed uh, in these uh, compensation terms over here. All right, so, and we can see that uh, there's a limit to uh, these currents here. They, they should be less than uh, the rated value which relates to the phase current rated value by this expression here. So I'm just trying to give an overview of what uh, uh, these things are and then we can then go and uh, model this in uh, Simulink which is shown here. And then if there's a low torque disturbance, let's say low torque decreases as a step, then what happens to electromagnetic torque <coughs> that is generated by the machine that is shown here and also to mechanical speed here. So then we move on to salient pole synchronous machines. So one thing to notice here is that uh, these are, uh, as described here, they are salient. That means it's not round ro rotor. And uh, so there's uh, a field winding here. Uh, you know, this and this is sh shown schematically like that. So there's a field winding which is supplied by DC current. And in addition, there's a damper winding. So, so damper winding is just like an induction machine. In the rotor, you have, uh, you know, this squirrel, squirrel cage. The bars that are inserted parallel to the axis of the shaft and these bars are short-circuited on both sides. So the same thing is done here, and the reason for this damper winding is to provide damping, as the name implies, under dynamic conditions. So when this machine is rotating at synchronous speed, where this D-axis is rotating at uh, the speed of the rotor in steady state, uh, you know, there is no, uh, volt there's no voltage induced in these uh, damper bars and therefore there's, uh, there's really no role for these uh, damper winding or damper bars as such. But uh, during uh, dynamic oscillations of the, the change in load torque, for example, then uh, the speed doesn't remain constant as we saw earlier. It goes through some variation. So during that time, uh, you know, these uh, bar car voltages in these bars would be induced and uh, currents would flow and cause losses. So that provides damping. So as the name implies, it's the damper action that takes place. So here we see that on the D-axis, we have three windings. One is the field winding here. One is the damper uh, D-axis winding and the stator D-axis winding. But on the Q-axis, we have only two. The, the Q-axis rotor is damper winding and the Q-axis uh, stator winding here. So again, uh, we can, do a very similar analysis as we have done before. I'm not going into the details here, but it's very similar. And uh, we come up with this equivalent circuit in D axis and Q axis, which uh, satisfies, uh, uh, you know, each axis satisfy, uh, satisfies uh, all the equations related to that axis here. And you can see that VRD and VRQ are zero because uh, these are uh, for the damper windings, uh, winding and uh, damper winding is short circuited at both ends here. So this is the electromagnetic torque that we can derive from equations that we have seen before. And you can see that there is a saliency term here because of the non, uh, because the salient uh, pole machine, the saliency in the D axis and Q axis do not have the same inductances. LSD is not same as LSQ, so we get some one term corresponding to the saliency. 
if it was a round rotor machine, then LST would be equal to LSQ, and this term would be zero here. So again, similar to what we have done before, uh, we can draw a space factor and the corresponding spacer phasor diagram. 